Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on where you are in this world. God bless you. This is Gloria White coming to you from Utah, USA. Today we're going to continue in the book of Galatians, and we are in the final chapter, chapter 6. We are in the King James Version of the Holy Bible. Brethren, if a man be overtaken or caught in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness. Go unto them with meekness and love, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Jesus said to do it in love, to do it with love. You can correct one another, but you need to do it with love. And you need to be considering yourself in is how would you want someone to talk to you when you have made a mistake so that we can consider how we are sounding to the other person. Is it, are they receiving it in a loving manner or will they reject it because you've been harsh? So we want to keep that in mind when we catch someone that's doing something that we know they shouldn't be doing and they just need a little nudge back to the sinner to stay on that narrow path. So always think, what would it sound like if your words were being spoken to you? Love one another as you love yourself. Verse 2, bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. It wasn't, God, it wasn't Christ's will that we be alone in our burdens, but to encourage and help one another. Verse 3, for if a man think to himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. So if you think you're all that, you better step back because no one is. We're none of us that good. Verse 4. But let every man prove or examine. Let every man examine his own work. What are you doing? Are you perfect? Do you have that moat in your eye? To get the splinter from your brother's eye, you have to first get rid of the moat in your own. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Now, let's, let's examine this. Because, let, but every man prove or examine himself, his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. So here my Bible points us to 1 Corinthians 11:28 and I've put like several markers here. 1 Corinthians 11.28, it says, But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Now, here, verse 28 actually points us to 2 Corinthians um, 13.5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves, know ye not your own selves, how that Christ Jesus is in you, except ye be retrobates, rep reprobates. So, when you're looking at yourself, are, are you looking at yourself as like, oh, I'm, I'm so good, I'm okay, I'm, I'm good. Or are you looking at yourself like through Christ's eyes? And, and are you pleasing before his eyes? 
or are you a reprobate? And verse 5 points us to 1 Corinthians 9.27. But I keep under my body, or I discipline my body, and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway or disqualified. Are you in a position to be telling another to correct another? Because if you haven't examined yourself and fixed your problems, how can you help someone else? It's the moat in the eye again. So let's go back to Galatians chapter 6, verse 4. But let every man prove or examine his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto or share with him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Now what is the Spirit? It's the Holy Spirit that Jesus sent as a comforter to us. It's from the Father. It's the Father's Spirit in us. So, for he that soweth to his flesh shall the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Now, if we faint not, this, this translates into, we do not lose heart. And if we therefore up, excuse me, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. So, we're to do good to everyone, but especially to those who share our faith, those in Christ, brothers and sisters. Verse 11, see, ye see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hand. As many as desire to make a fair show or a good showing in the flesh they constrain you or try to compel you to be circumcised only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of christ they want you to be circumcised so they can gloat over you as many as desire to make a fair show or a good showing in the flesh they constrain or try to compel you to be circumcised only lest they should suffer or but they may not suffer persecution for the cross of Christ lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ and it says in in translating to make it clearer it says only that they may not suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. Meaning, men, boys used to be circumcised on the eighth day, and that was under the covenant of Abraham. 
And that was um, something that Abraham and God made an agreement to, that that would distinguish his people from the other people, his chosen people, Israel. But now we still practice that today, but not for and because of the covenant between God and Abraham, because now we're under Christ, but we do it for health purposes. Verse 13, for neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law. So even those ones that are that are circumcised, they don't keep the law but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. Sort of a nanner, nanner, nanner. <laughs> I got you. Because it's not the flesh that's circumcised under Christ. It's the heart. You know, God looks on the heart. And so remember, throughout the Old Testament, and he would say, I'm going to take away the stony heart and put a flesh heart in that's soft and tender. Not hard as a rock that you go about beating people to a pulp with your words. No, we have a fleshly heart that's soft and tender and loving, and so we can express that love and tenderness and caring to one another and that fleshly heart is beautiful verse 14 but god forbid that i should glory save in the cross of our lord jesus christ i'm only going to glory glory in the cross of our lord jesus christ by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. And it says, except, but God forbid that I should glory, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom, or by which, the cross is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. Pick up your cross and follow me crucify the flesh as Christ did, meaning not, not to give in to the lust of your flesh, but to resist the urges of the flesh and things in this world that the flesh desires. Verse 15, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision but a new creature or creation. You know, you seek Christ, you ask for forgiveness of your sins, you repent, and then you're baptized, and when you come up out of that water, you're a new creature. Then the Holy Spirit fills you. So you're a new creature, a new creation. Verse 16, but as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. From henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Didn't say be with your flesh. It said be with your spirit. These fleshy bodies are going to fall off, rot and decay and turn back into dust. It's our spirits. That is what travels from this earth to heaven before the Father. And no one comes to the Father except through the Son. And as always, I love you.